Alexander Williamson here. Let me just set up the tripod. All right. So, today uh, I wanted to talk to you about a couple different things. Just got out of the shower, so my hair looks a little wet and it might be foggy. Okay. So, today what I wanted to talk to you guys about are a couple different things. I wanted to talk to you guys about the ongoing shrimp. Uh, videos that I'm posting. So I'm posting videos of shrimp that are new species. So new species to the hobby. There's 1500 species of shrimp in the world and a freshwater small shrimp I should say. That's not counting um, crawdads or crayfish or anything like that. So we're talking little little teeny uh, fish. So of the fish in the world, you know my hair's wet might just put my hood up to dry it. All right, I feel feel a little more cozy that way. Okay, so out of those shrimp, a lot of them haven't made the hobby yet, and I did a video two nights ago about three different shrimp, bamboo shrimp, uh, miniature bamboo shrimp, and uh, the green lace filter feeder shrimp. And so with those three shrimp, uh, they're all really closely related, and I just wanted to kind of cover the bases and uh, put put those all together, give you guys information, pretty detailed information about like where they're from, uh, what they like to eat, what pH they have, all that kind of stuff um, for their water parameters. Now, um, today the things I wanted to discuss are um, more shrimp. <laughs> um, we're going to take a look at what's going on in the lab, uh, aka the living room. And we're also going to discuss uh, how to work on aquascapes a little bit. And then um, I wanted to touch uh, off on the fact that I also just got this book, um, which is The Dragon Behind the Glass by Emily Voigt, and it is a story about uh, murder and smuggling of arowana fish, and it is should be an interesting read. I don't know if any of you guys have read this book, but I mean, fish, New York Times reporter, uh, murder, the mob, international black market billionaires buying fish, kind of an interesting story. So, um, I don't know if you've read The Dragon Behind the Glass, but if you have, um, let me know in the comments what you thought of it. Um, hey, Patricia, how's it going? Good to see you on here. People are starting to trickle in. Um, I'm trying to figure out a time to do these live streams uh, that works best for everyone. I know maybe earlier in the day is not always the best. Maybe I should do like five o'clock on Fridays or something, but people are out on Fridays. There's other fish channels that are that I don't want to compete with, and so it's a little bit of like uh, growing pains of the channel to figure that out. But as I was saying, the things I'm going to cover today are some new shrimp and how we're going to approach in the videos in the future, what's going on in here, and also some aquascaping and some tips for aquascaping, as well as uh, any questions you guys may have. I'd Yeah, after dinner, I mean, I think that would be a good time too. The thing is, I have to keep in mind that I have East Coast viewers, and I have, uh, you know, European viewers, so it, it's kind of like I could do it at 3 in the morning, and maybe, like, people in the Philippines and the Middle East would be watching, but no one else would, so... Um, for you guys in this video, also I have, um, first of all, I've got this, uh, you're at Mountain Time, Patricia, yeah, I'm Pacific, out in Seattle. I'll flip all this around in a minute, um, but I just wanted to say hi with my face, you know, my face, so, um, let's flip all this around, and I have been keeping my shrimp in the dark for the last half hour. And I want to show you guys um, what's new in the colony. Um, I know that if you've been watching my channel, so I fed them. First of all, good news is the Caradina is still totally fine, rocking on. She's doing well. 
The mystery fry have not gotten much larger, but they have gotten a little bit larger. And uh, if we zoom in here on the colony, sorry, this YouTube zoom is like the worst. Uh, we've got some Riley or Really shrimp that are growing very quickly. Um, I know the color is off too, like this is not what it looks like. That rock looks green, whereas that rock is bright yellow. Um, but I've got a little breeder tank here with a bunch of Riley shrimp in it that are probably half an inch long, separating them for both the local fish auction that's coming up, fish, shrimp, and plants. And then also I've got some tangerines up here as well as a couple really young oddball uh, na natural shrimp, which I thought were kind of cool. Uh, in this tank now, we've got a lot of red painted fire adults. Hey, York, Yorkie T. Um, so we've got a lot of that. Um, we were having hydro problems and also uh, little, they weren't planaria, but they're like little worms and like detritus worms. And so I wasn't that worried about it, but I've kind of let the snails come back, uh, whereas I had been kind of getting rid of them slash uh i know it's probably mean but you smush them and the shrimp just go right after it and clean it up right away plus then they can eat the shell on the little ones um i'm gonna try to find my mystery fry for you guys to see if maybe anybody has an idea what they are um hydra is the worst you know what's kind of cool though is uh I have hydra now that are blue and green, and I don't know if that's their diet or something, or if that is just like their variety, but um, let's see here. The fish are so skittish, so let's see if they'll come to the top. I've been feeding them, uh, I have a combination of, I gave them some baby brine, but there's enough Daphnia and stuff like that that are an issue. So Justin is asking, why hydra are bad um hydra in themselves aren't necessarily bad in say like a fish tank um they can be especially if you're breeding uh fish because they i've done a little video on them and they sorry guys i'm trying to zoom out with this camera and it's just not cooperating with the touch um but yeah so hydra let's see if we can find any on the glass sometimes they're hanging out on the glass but you can see there's a little worm right there, um, and then I've looked at them under the microscope. They're not planaria, as I said, but hydra actually have, like, they look like a sea anemone, kind of, or like one of those wacky, wild, inflatable, wobbling, flailing arms tube man kind of things. <laughs> they have uh, a bunch of arms, 10 to 12 arms, and they reach out and grab your uh, shrimp or small critters. Usually they're after like Daphnia or e like smaller than even the baby shrimp, but they can get big and they can get in a collective. And I have a video saying, um, I think it's called like baby shrimp being attacked over and over. Um, so the Hydra sting the baby shrimp who have softer exoskeletons and one it stresses them out but two it also um weakens their immune system and so it can be a problem over time for sure um on the rock right now you can probably make out if we can get this to focus again youtube is just terrible with how it lets you live stream focus but we've got baby blue survivors remember we had the gudgeons jump uh two feet out of their tank down into this tank and go on a rampage they killed uh, in the final count i found over 70 shrimp the next morning that had been crushed but not eaten there's a new part to the story which will be coming out soon on my channel but essentially they also got into this tank up here and they got into the another set of breeder boxes. Um, no, planaria is a good way to rid yourself of hydra. Uh, one o only bad thing is that the product kills the snails. Oh yeah, um, you know I so far I haven't gotten overrun, and I've been just kind of smushing or grabbing any of the hydra that I see that are getting very big. 
and that's been okay. And I mean, they are stinging the little shrimp, but so far nothing is large enough that it's actually killing any shrimp that I've noticed yet. But uh, my peacock gudgeons definitely killed some shrimp, a whole bunch of shrimp. And so now I've got the little blue guys that look like apostrophes or something uh, on the rocks. I put some food out and covered the tank, as I was saying, so that they would come out and feed so we could take a look at them. I'm also waiting for the fish to come out because I wanted to show you guys the new fish. They've been eating, like, Daphne. Oh, there's one. So they've been eating, like, Daphne and funky stuff that is too small. Like, when I watch them, I don't know what they're going after, but they're definitely getting something. So they're definitely not... Um, if any part of the hydra is cut, it regrows again. It has to be 100% removal. That's partially true. Like a cell cluster, here's a hydra actually floating right on top there. You can't really make it out in the video. But uh, if you smush them really good, uh, they will kind of get ruined. Um, I've learned. I put them in a Petri dish to find out. But definitely, if you cut them in half, if you cut them into quarters, like they'll come right back. The other thing that's crazy that I learned that they now do is, or that they've always done, is that they uh, shoot off or eject their arms if they're under duress, and they can actually have each one of those arms grow another hydra, hence the name hydra. Um, so I see the fish. I don't know if, oh, there we go. So the camera's starting to kind of focus on them. Uh, bear with me. So these are the fish, and maybe if we go down, you guys can see them a little better. I don't know. We'll we'll find out. Hold on, let me adjust the tripod so it'll let me do this. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna be any better. Um, but basically, we've got little teeny fish. There's one there. Um, that are swimming around, cruising around, and, oh wait, no, that's, that's a, sh is that a shrimp or is that a fish? That is a shrimp. So the, f oh, there's the fish. So the fish are right in here somewhere, darting around. They're almost clear, if you can see that thing moving around. They have, you can make out what seems to be a spine and eyes, um, but they're super teeny. There we go. Like, it's... Sorry, guys, that this focus is awful. But, I mean, they're way smaller than even baby shrimp. They're, like... I mean, I don't know. I don't know what kind they are, but they could even be baby tetras because they were in a tank with, uh, tetras. Uh, I moved the hornwort that you can see there, and I, I don't know. I'd love to hear everyone's guess and just see what we get there's five of them that i've counted so far in the tank they are growing a little bit um you can see there though like a newborn shrimp doesn't even touch the size of them like man i wish these cameras would allow me to focus on live streams but um yeah so this doesn't help you much but you can see them moving around here and there and uh Let's see if this one's getting close enough that maybe you'll be able to see it when it crosses over a white patch. Yeah, there you go. So, they look like they could be baby guppies from this, but they're not. Like, I looked at them very closely. They have a clear body and a head, and I didn't think they had a yolk sac, but they definitely do have, like, a little um, package of something under them. So, I don't know if it's a yolk sac or just tiny organs. But the, I'm going to let them hang out in the shrimp tank for now, um, because why not? So on to the next little project I'm working on, and pardon the glare, it's time of day. Which is your most loved shrimp you have? I like my blue dreams. And as we're speaking of, here comes one right up to the glass. So these are from Lucas Brett's, uh, the line originally. And that one just molted, and that's why its patterns, or its shell isn't, like, super solid. But I like to keep them on lighter substrate, and that's actually why I just changed the substrate in the in this tank here, because mine were getting so blue that they looked black. Also, I wanted to introduce, while it is on the film, uh, 
this new um, Calico Pleco. So it's a baby, but I got it. Uh, I don't have any other Plecos or any filter feeder fish at the moment, actually. And then I've moved the red ram's horn snails to this tank as well. They're red and they're either opaline or they're um, uh, golden in their shells. So we've got the uh, Pleco, which I think looks pretty smart, pretty sharp. Um, Lucas, yeah, Lucas is my hero. Um, he does a really good job. He's a really nice and humble dude. And I just, yeah, I, I didn't buy these specifically from him. My friend bought them in a grouping and I got them. And then um, from there, I also got these um, leopard endlers from him too. But there was a bit of a kerfuffle in that uh, I bought these as a pair at a local fish shop in Seattle. And uh, it ended up that... Hold on one sec. Let me mute... Uh, let me mute this other program. I don't know if you guys could hear the notifications going off, but I didn't want to chance it. So the other thing is um, you can see this male is showing off for the female, but he actually is a tiger endler, and he has a blue flame on his tail, but uh, Lucas has raised them so that their tails come in different shapes and they come in different colors, whereas their body stays like leopard printy. But at night, when you look at them, their bodies are more traditional endler looking bodies. They're not so bright. And so hopefully these two females are actually, in fact, the same species. Um, but it's possible that they may not be because the other two fish that I bought so I bought a total of six fish from the shop around here, and they're usually a really good shop to buy from, and they were charging more for the couples because they were from Lucas, and Lucas sells them for, like, I think, like, I don't want to say it, what, uh, an incorrect price, but I think they're, like, 50 bucks or something like that for a pair of, of nice-looking of these uh, leopard endlers. They're just a rare, hard-to-find strain with that blue and the green and uh, I've selected just spade tails I think they look pretty cool they still seem to swim around fine some of the some of the guppies have and endlers have such sad tails that they they can't even like move as pretty as they are um, thanks uh, Patricia for the, saying the fish look nice the other thing that's nice about this tank right now is I have these ruby tetras which have lost a little bit of their red because I one, I think they're a little stressed that I remodeled their house. But two, I think that um, they basically don't have anything to blend in with. But they have given up trying to hide all the time. And for a long time, these guys in the other tanks, they were always hiding. And so now there's three of them in here, and I'm waiting to get more. I'm going to have six of them. Because you always want to keep tetras in a group if possible. And three is like the bare minimum and you really need more. Um, I have also taken out my homemade dam. If you saw the little, um, like I made like a log boom out of floating um, uh, bubble wrap. So you can see that in this tank... Um, I'll lo let me talk a little bit about aquascaping. If you guys have any questions, you let me know. But basically in this tank right now, I've got two female endlers and two male endlers. It would be preferable if I had more females, but uh, they seem to be holding their own and not getting too stressed. And in this tank, uh, I have five uh, tanks at the moment. Uh, four that are up and running for actual fish um, and shrimp. The other one's like a hospital tank or a, an emergency tank kind of thing. I would love to take, get a 20 gallon or a 30 long or a 33 and partition it off into like five gallon sections for shrimp. Um, but I'm not at that point yet. Uh, I am almost near on the, on the minutes watched, uh, of being able to get back to being, um, monetized on YouTube and I don't like doing all the ads and stuff um, on an educational channel um, but 
if I reach the amount of viewers that it actually makes a difference that like a banner ad and not like those 30 second annoying ads, if I can do like just a little banner ad when you click on the channel <clears throat> or something like that, um, I'm not necessarily opposed to those probably. Um, and that may allow me to actually buy more cool stuff or get another tank up and running. And so like, I'll consult you guys about that. Um, the other thing is I've kind of set it up on Patreon so that people, um, don't need to watch ads right now. And I was monetized and then they changed the system. And so I just turned off all the ads anyways for now. Um, cause one, why would you have them? But, uh, yeah, so a lot of this, like the tripod I have now and some of the, the critters that I've gotten were from uh, Patreon supporters. And so that's really sweet. Um, it's awesome. I, I'm a graphic designer, and right now I work uh, job to job, like gig to gig as a, um, you know, I do illustrations, I do art, I do logos and things like that. But then... Uh, I don't right now have like a steady income. It's all, can you make you a logo? Yeah, I can make you a logo. Uh, message me later or uh, after the thing. Uh, if you go to www.somainkdesigns, somainkdesigns.com, you can check out a bunch of my art. I'm going to start doing more fish art again too. I've done a lot of animal art. But I need to, like, actually do a logo for this channel. I started it in December, and thanks to you guys being interested, we're now at, like, 180,000 hours watch total, or, I mean, <laughs> minutes watch total. And I've been cranking out videos just because I've been in between um, jobs. Uh, <clears throat> but... Um, I think once I have a more steady job, uh, it'll probably be like twice a week type videos or something like that. Uh, so the other thing I want to talk about before we get into the more aquascapey talk is that the other night I made a video and let me grab it here without knocking anything over. So I made this little contraption and it is bubble wrap with plastic zip tie or plastic twist ties. And it's based around a piece of, uh, if you can see the filament there in the dark, uh, a fishing line. And then under that, there's more of them, and there's a bead that holds it down. And so you see all these floating plants. I can scoot them all away, because right now, you see how they pile up and get twisted together? I can try to move them all to one side, and... Side note, I want to eventually, they, they're slow growers and they're expensive, but uh, I'll find someone hopefully who has some red root, uh, ah, red root floaters um, or red root runners, whatever you want to call them. But I just think they're a cool plant. They look pretty similar up top, but then the roots are a bright red um, that you can see when they're healthy, they're, they're a bright red. That's probably too bright. Can't control the brightness on a live stream, guys. I'm sorry. Um, but the rest of it is water lettuce up top. And so the whole point being that this is a very rock-centric uh, aquascape. And because of that, I wanted to make sure that the fish get enough of what they need from the plants and from... Uh, you know, the ammonia, the nitrates, and the nitrites. Wanted to make sure that that's all being cycled out with a planted tank style system. So I started planting um, dwarf hair grass all over, some plugs of it that I'd been growing in another tank, and then some that I bought. And then uh, it's not dirt. Uh, you ask if it's a dirted tank. Um, it's not exactly dirt. It's So it's sand and then crushed pea gravel, and then a substrate that has some dirt, but it's not fertilized, it's, there's nothing added to it, and then there's another layer of gravel under that. And these two layers, the top layers, are more of an accident. There's some a black layer too. If you can see on the corner, you can probably see it there, there's a black layer. Um, 
<clears throat> that is because I tried this all in black first. There's probably a video of when it looked like that. And the rocks didn't stand out at all. And I did it because I thought, oh, I'll keep red shrimp in here and that will darken them up because the color of your substrate really dictates what color your shrimp are going to be. So like this shrimp is kind of pinkish because it's hanging out near this bright rock um, and light lighter brown leaves. But the one back over here that always hangs out in the dark over there, he's like blood red or she's blood red. And so are the ones in the back if you can see them over there. So in this tank, because I have I decided now I'm doing blue and it works with the dark stone. Sorry for the glare, guys. And I don't know if this configuration is set in stone. <laughs> eh, bad. Um, yeah, so for the stem plants, uh, you mentioned growing Rotala. So I did have Rotala in here. Uh, I also had Rotala Wallachia. Um, Hey Bentley, what's up man? We're the ones who can't follow instructions on our uh, on our local fish clubs website. I guess this is the the bad boy corner. Uh, so yeah, these are Rotala Wallachia in here that are just unhealthy right now. The that bottom one there, um, but they were. Um, I didn't have CO two going while I got these fish acclimated. Um, to this tank. The tiger endlers were the only ones that were in here. They should probably be called leopard endlers, honestly. Um, <laughs> yeah, Bentley, I feel you, man. I would have done the same thing, and then I, as I was typing, I was like, oh, Bentley already said something. Cool. Alright, it's either this or this, and I just did a quick Google search to find out what plant. If you, I mean, you're if you're not in the Seattle Fish Club, you wouldn't know, but we have a competition or a little lighthearted uh, name that plant thing every month. And uh, Bentley and I uh, accidentally responded to the group rather than to the moderator um, <laughs> with an answer for everyone to see. So smart. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking for the red root uh, floaters or runners. They grow slow. And then that will help, since it's such a rock-heavy aquascape, that will really help with filtering things. Plus, it'll also provide a place for the endler uh, fry to hide, and then also shrimp like hanging out up there. And I'm trying to see if we can find any other shrimp right now. Um, I just put the sand in last night, and I also uh, had a trick. No, so there used to be CO2 in this tank. There was CO2 running... Um, in the club uh yeah well if somebody wants to hook me up with some red root floaters and i i mean i can pay them or trade them shrimp or other plants or whatever i would be grateful water lettuce gets huge yeah when it it looks exactly like that the roots are now two feet long give it some time yeah so that was what i was showing you earlier too is uh right now with the current the um the filter just sucks it in even when it's on slow i can crank it up a little bit because it's still a little murky from all the the stuff uh the sand being in and it's a silica based sand from national geographic and i'm not sure um how they'll end up uh you ask how the peacock ferns are doing peacock ferns melted they're not an underwater plant i thought i'd give it a chance they totally melted. Everything with the name Peacock in my life in these tanks has given me a headache. I had Peacock guppies that all died. I had Peacock ferns that melted, and I knew they kind of would, but I thought maybe they won't. And then I had Peacock gudgeons that jumped from this tank out of it, down into here, killed 70% of my baby shrimp. Luckily, I had a ton of shrimp, and so you can see in there the little blue ones... I probably got hopefully 15 or 20 around the tank. And then um, the red ones, I have uh, about 20 red uh, reallys and some orange tangerines. You can put straws together. and Yeah, so straws totally would have worked too. But what I did was I just zip-tied, uh, or not zip-tied, twist-tied, bubble wrap over some string and then what I did was I hung a uh, binder clips but that didn't drop straight down so I put 
the binder clip. I'll clip it on here and then show you guys. So I put the binder clip like on the edge of the, the aquarium and then I have beads that I that are stone and bone and I put those straight down so that it would sink right to the edge so nothing could sneak by and then I made kind of like like a, a boom uh, let's see here. I'll set it down on the ground so you can check it out. But basically I set it up like this and it's just a really cheap way to do it. Really like spur of the moment. I was just trying to aquascape and was sick of it doing this and it starts to melt and get unhealthy when, when it does that too long. So that's what spurred that. But the other thing that I have a ton of in this aquascape right now is crips. I've got crip undulata and a couple other species in there. I've got Temple Compacta, um, a few of those kind of scattered in here. Um, and then I've got some uh, hair grass. Uh, let's see what, or no, it's a uh, Cypress Helferi. And then I also have the Miniature Dwarf hair grass, which seems redundant. Miniature Dwarf, but what, okay, whatever. And then I actually have one odd. Um, uh, plant back there that's a, a sword plant so um i don't know i want your guys advice too uh on this because this originally was set up more of it was smaller it was only this tall it was, this rock wasn't here this was the tallest and what's the lights you have on them review oh okay um maybe the number um i'm sorry Yorkie T, what are you saying? Uh, you you want me to tell you that what kind of light I have on it? Um, I've got ah, so I've got this uh, Fluval like uh, or no, this is an Aquion here. It's just a cheapo light. I don't like it that much. These lights I made myself, and they are actually just high-powered multi-spectrum LEDs. And then they're on like a rubber waterproof stripping. And I just got the aluminum stuff that you would use for making screens or sliding um, door type things. And so I, I glued that into there and then I sealed it again with a silicone cover. And then you can chain them together in as many as you want. Also, not the best, but it's cheap. It uses very little energy. And to build the lights, it probably costs me like five bucks for the aluminum six foot long piece and I had extra and then probably 20 bucks for uh three or four yards of the the LEDs ordered from China and then uh the power box which I had sitting around but that cost me like I don't know maybe 10 bucks or something. So you could probably do this whole setup and I could have done double with the materials, but I just don't like how they look and I, you know, but they work for now. Uh, they definitely like this hornwort is like growing like crazy. That's, I only put that in there six days ago. Whenever the, the gudgy, <laughs> gudgy, the gudgeon attack happened is when I threw that in there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so it's, yeah, it's a nice little DIY light setup. It's waterproof um, in theory. I hope it is. <laughs> Everything should be except for the power cord. The other little trick I use here is I wrap all my electrical stuff up off of the ground just because obviously you spill stuff. Um, LED floodlights, yeah, I like those. My wife just doesn't like them in the living room. I wanted to ask one question, then I'll show you my other lights, which I actually kind of like. Um, so here, I don't know what I want to do on this, um, the aquascape, you can see, see pictures on, I'm, uh, I just set up an Instagram too for this. I should put a link up. Um, but, uh, basically uh, there's another piece that goes right in here and another one that goes into the far back for scale so that you can see the depth of this whole thing. Um, uh, and then I've, that's why I've planted a couple plants, but nothing is going to be taller than the third highest point, which will be like right here. I want to keep all the plants at that height or lower and then maybe, maybe do like Rotala Wallachia or um, 
Ludwigia or some sort of like yellowish or orange or red, maybe maybe a temple plant of some sort, um, if it goes all the way to the top and it's in the back. Uh, but until then, until I can line it all, I tried it with Java Fern. I don't like the green with it. I think red is the way to go. I've also got this off-white sand in there right now. But I did have the sand covering this piece right here because that rock actually goes under this rock. And this is just um, igneous rock from... I just can't get the growth with LED over fluorescent. I haven't tried the floodlight. Yeah, so it makes a big difference what flore or what LED lights you have. Um, here you can see my blue really shrimp. So I have them in with my blue dreams, but there's only two of them. So uh, and they're females, so I don't really think they're gonna ruin my strain or anything. I can keep an eye on them once they're buried and pregnant. I then can move them down into here, and then their babies don't get. Uh, sexually mature for a few months so you have time to kind of watch them and then figure out a game plan so this is a nurse nursery hatchery so i then play musical guppies and musical uh shrimp also i will be ordering uh if i can nail down this source some ninja shrimp i don't know if you guys have heard of them but they turn color uh on the fly like a chameleon would almost and, or more like an anole, like they can turn five or six colors or shades of like red and brown and um, like that. You have a 125 gallon for deep water tanks and an LED on nano tanks. Yeah, if you have a big, big tank or you're really trying to like grow a garden style like Dutch or German aquascape tank where it's packed with plants, uh, you may not want an LED. Like this one, you can see from the reflection in the water, your choices are blue or red and white. And so it's like you can, that's their quote unquote full spectrum is the fact that you can turn the blue light on. I don't know. I think this one, it extends out. That's nice. It's waterproof. That's nice. But I don't, I'm not in love with it. I think I'm going to get a diffuser for it actually. Like uh, maybe like scuff up some plastic or something and just put that on it so that the light actually looks a little bit hazier in there. Um, I think that would look nice. Um, also, I'm trying to figure out how I want to hide like the filter and the rest of the stuff. I could center it behind the big rock, but uh, I don't know yet. So I got to figure that stuff out. The other thing is I kind of think that this scape should, hold on one moment, pardon the shakiness for a sec. I think that the scape should actually be rotated a little bit like such so that there's a little more character to it or something. I don't know. I'm still playing with how that's all going to go, but there's another rock that fits right in here, another one behind it, which currently are over here on my table. And this afternoon I had the task, hey JH Aquatics, uh, they were side shots from a massive stem in the community. You're having trouble getting growth from LED, that's a pr yeah, uh, LEDs should grow things fine if they're good LEDs. If they're little clip-on LEDs, not always the best. But so yeah, these rocks fit back in where I was talking about the way I put the scape together. But I have some java moss here that I've laid out and I've actually separated strands of it that have um, basically, let me try to find one that's clear, like here you go. So like this one, you see how it looks like a fern almost. I'm going to glue those in the background with super glue, just cyanoacrylate based glue. I'm going to glue them onto these rocks so that they kind of give some depth back in the scape later on. I also have a bunch of this um, a bunch of this fossilized stuff from up in Bellingham. If you know this state at all, I can get it by the truckload. But there's two problems, and they could be good problems for some people, but not for me the way I have my tank. Um, they have carbon in the fossils, like graphite and carbon, and then they also have iron residue. Um, and it's in a... Uh, like, I don't know what it is. I guess a silt stone of some sort, almost limestone. But yeah, so after I get off this live stream, I'm going to be gluing this Java moss, which I've dried, and I'm just literally using super glue. Um, 
Over here in this tank, um, it's a little more planted. We'll finish up with the big, with my most planted tank too. This tank, um, I have the Aquion or Aqua Aqua Sky and uh, water changes. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope um, if you want to listen to like my most recent shrimp video, if you didn't check that out where I talk about green lace shrimp and uh, bamboo shrimp, uh, it, it's one that like you might want to see the pictures, but I'm just blabbing for a half hour. So you could probably um, just take that and listen to it um, while <laughs> you're doing your water changes. So this tank, uh, I don't really do too many ferts. I have some Easy Green from Aquarium Co-op that I'll squirt in every once in a while. I have a little bit of iron, but I haven't needed it. Um, and then right now, I've just got this giant pile of rocks, but I am going to scape this at some point. And I've given up on my biome thing, um, although this does have predominantly Venezuelan fish, but there's some rainbow fish and some gudgeons that needed rehoming. So the never-ending betrayal of my gudgeons, my peacock gudgeons, they're in here now, all three of them. They breed in this rock here, and, and they don't use their terracotta thing at all. But they actually come up all the way to these uh, breeder cages, which I have... Please don't be dead. Okay, you're just like napping. Um, breeder cages where I have a couple. Those are females, by the way. Um, so I think that's cool. I, those females I'm holding in reserve so that I can interbreed them with some males and that that way the females I can tell, oh, this one's yellow, this one is speckled, and I can tell them apart. Because right now most of my... Um, guppies the females don't look like anything and it gets confusing and if one gets out or if a baby holds over i don't you know it's not professional breeding whatsoever but for my hobby it's just how i do things um oh man bentley man why you gotta do so much cool stuff you always make me jealous you get a 33 long oh man i wish i had that um uh, tangerine tigers, uh, Bentley, you could use whatever you want, man. I've been having my crystal shrimp in our water. I think you should try to get a hold of with me. Let's try to get some people to buy them, but get some ninja shrimps. So like the Fijian ones, they go from clear to black to red to white. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Bentley, that would be awesome. If you can hook me up with some tanks, I will try to figure out how not to get murdered by my wife. So, uh, so far I just keep bringing them in and I'm like, hey honey, we're getting one more tank. But the deal is, as long as they look pretty to her, I get to keep them. Uh, start mixing caradina. Yeah, um, the other thing, those green lace shrimp that I went over the other night, those are pretty cool if you put those in there because they're filter feeders. So they would kind of take a different niche than the rest of them. Um, so yeah, I'm looking for ninja shrimp in the U.S. and not the Taiwan bees that they're calling ninja shrimps that just have bands. Um, yeah, Bentley, the uh, the tangerine shrimp are really nice. I don't want you guys to get dizzy while I'm walking, sorry. Um, but I've got some in here. But they're just neo caradina. But they're really vivid, like you probably can't tell from this, but they just glow. And also, by the way, this is a female with a rainbow tail who was sold to me at the shop as a female endler. And I talked to Lucas Bretz, who, who actually created the strain of these uh, endlers. And he's like, no, the females all are plain. And so I paid a bunch of money for two females that were incorrect. So they're in a in a box with some adult tangerines right here. Um, so the tangerines are chilling or pumpkins or whatever you want to call them. Papayas, mangoes, I don't care what you want to call them. People make up a lot of names, but Lucas never talks to you. No, I've, I've really hassled Lucas and he's super busy and I'm pretty sure I pissed him off. Like, a few, like, I don't know if I pissed him off, but I'm pretty sure he's like, okay, okay, fanboy, calm down. Um, 
but yeah, um, if you start a coral frag tank, that's when you're going to need some UV lights with your LED stuff. I mean, you can do all LED, but if you're talking salt water, the best setups are kind of a combo of either LED, like UV panel type things, or, uh, you know, that's a whole other world that I'm not as well versed in. I know a little bit about it, but I just like the fact that here in Seattle, I can keep crystal shrimp in with all my other shrimp. And so, uh, yeah, Bentley, I'll check, chat with you at the meeting. Um, oh, you have to head to work. Okay. So take it easy, Bentley. Always good to talk to you, man. I'll see you at the meeting on Tuesday. Um, over here in this tank, this is the one that is planted all to heck, and it's planted way beyond what it looks like because these are touching these are planted basically i mean you don't plant java ferns but they are in the ground with weights um you hung out with lucas in chicago is that what you're saying i haven't hung out with him but um i just like the guy he's a nice guy and he has really really good products and i think he has a really good heart and doesn't care about profit so much um as he does his work as a um hobbyist and scientists and biologists basically and so i really like working or ordering stuff from lucas here you can see my pelvica chromis tenaceous nigerian red it's kind of a hard fish to find, definitely hard to find out here. Portland, uh, the wet spot had some, and uh, yeah, and then the male should be in here, I mean, he should be, he is in here somewhere, but they have these cool leopard spots, and when they spawn, which they've already paired off, um, they pair off uh, frequently for life, okay, the male's back in here, and maybe if I feed them, they'll come out for you guys. They The problem I've been having with these guys lately is they eat food, but they only want moving food. And they don't care if it's live, but they want to see it drifting down. So let's try that. And then splashing the water helps. So here she comes. And they're still in the process of doing their little love dance. And if they miss it, that's it. That's like, nah, I'm not going to pick it off the ground. The other fish will clean it up. But usually, she, oh, she got it off the ground. Okay, she must be hungry. The male uh, won't come out right now, but you can see in here what I'm doing with the guppy strains that I've got going. Got some cool females that, again, have color in their tails. I just love my pelvic acromis. There's the male peeking out. He's got a big orange leopard tail. My shrimp want nothing but blood worms. You know, violent shrimp. Um, but yeah, there's the male. Um, this is just a 20 long, and right now I've got a janky thing set up as the holder. It's like just, I don't know what <laughs> what this little plastic piece is even to. And then the other thing's on the auto feeder because my fry, I really try to keep fed uh, four times a day, so it'll feed them twice, and then I feed them in the morning at night. This was the guppy that I was really trying to mate with everybody. He's got yellow on his liar's tail, and then I also have this other male. So there's only two males in here, but I figured between the two of them, they would uh, make some offspring, and then there's like, I don't know, 10 females in here of different sizes. And then there's also some Nigerian uh, rocket killifish, which I think are really cool. They've got that beautiful blue eye, and then they've got like a rocket looking tail. And kind of a funny story was I was at a, a local fish store, which I like, and I was talking to the guy and he's like, uh, we have some of those, but they're on sale because they don't look good. And it turned out they were just females. So um, I got a couple females and males. Um, let's see if you can see them right here from above, uh, on sale because they didn't really know what they, they had, I guess. And I didn't for sure until I got home, but I suspected. So this aquascape used to be like very creatively done. Uh, you can probably see here, oh, the Anubius is floating. Let me sink that back down. Hold on one moment, folks. Um, 
So he's a Nubius, you know. You gotta. This one is. I think this one is golden coin, African golden coin. Uh, yeah, that's what this one is. I like the coffee, coffee, uh, ones. Coffee. I can't remember how you say it, but yeah. So this was like a fake bonsai tree, and it has moss, and then it has a mix of Monte Carlo and actually the algae because of this light has formed in there and it has bonded it all together so tightly that I can like pull it like a big mass and redrape it over the other um, sticks and stuff in this um, in this tank. So it does okay even out of the water like that for a while. It will suck up through capillary action enough water um, for that. But um, you can see in this tank, I had CO2 for a while and I was getting beautiful reds out, up there out of the rotalas and stuff. The stems are really beautiful red on the temple plant. Um, and then I had some mayaka and um, yeah, there's just a whole bunch of different plants in this tank. Um, Monte Carlo doing good without CO2. Yeah, Monte Carlo seems to do fine. It just doesn't carpet without co2 very well but it still grows um but i just have odds and ends like this that are floating around right now too because i'm in the process of figuring out what i'm gonna do also my java ferns are at the point where they're splitting off now and they're actually turning into you know multiple units through the rhizomes on the bottom there and so this tank couldn't have more <laughs> plant fill i mean it could but this whole corner is just nuts of, there are 10 plants in here. Let me grab the one that's not planted in, in the most, but uh, pearlweed, I have pearlweed also. Um, but yeah, so you can see here that my Java game, this is the small one that's on top and this tank is what, 28 inches long or, no, 32 inches long. So good size plant and the other ones are even longer and they'll grow out of the tank and there's 10 because I got a deal on them I got them for like three for a dollar of those bunches when they were about 10 or 15 inches and so I ended up with a bunch but now I'm like well I don't even know if I want to cut off all of these and start new plants or what I'm doing so they're kind of in purgatory but it's okay because the uh, pelvicochromus tenatius uh, Nigerian red, these the the purdy fish as as my wife says, um, and then the rocket killies, they both don't like extreme light, and so that serves as kind of a nice little umbrella for them. And then uh, instead of having floating uh, plants up top, I was gonna do some water lettuce or cat tongue or something like that, but. I didn't. Um, moving on onto the uh, the light, because you mentioned wanting a little bit of a review of the light. Um, the light on this tank is uh, an a fluval aquia sky. I think is how you say it, but I don't know. It's not the most powerful light. It doesn't need to be, especially with a twelve inch deep tank or, or fourteen inch deep tank. Um, it doesn't need to be, it has kind of interesting features in that it actually, like, you can make it look like lightning and thunder. Let me grab the little remote. One downside definitely is that you can't, if you lose the remote, you're just SOL on, on taking care of it. But for like these, uh, dwarf cribs that I have, um, and by the way, the, uh, the, uh, crib undulatas are like doing really well those aren't very old and they started really small they're doing really well under the light so the diffuse light is helping you can see that there's different um there's different guppies of all ages and then i sell at least half of everything being born right off the bat to uh, local stores. Also, I don't know if anybody else has had this problem, but I have snails all over this coconut and I'm like debating killing them because these guys love eating them um, and it's really good for them. You can see, I've said this before, but I think the male looks like he has terrible makeup from the Drew Carey show, like Mimi. 
Um, okay, so in any case, these two are a little fidgety to breed. They also rip my plants out because they like the roots and they like the red. So that's why I took the CO2 off of this tank is because they were eating anything awesome that the CO2 was doing, including the Rotala Wallichia, uh, which it looks green here. It was bright purple, and you can see they just like bent it over and whatever. They, they're just like little troublemakers. But they're so pretty, I can't hold it against them. Um, so they have a coconut. They have, believe it or not, there's two more pot hides under here made out of ceramic pots. And then the thing they like the most, though, is just right under here, this little canal um, in between the rock, a little canyon, and then underneath this tree, um, which is spiderwood, Malaysian spiderwood. They also hang out back under the bubble filter back here, the, the sponge filter. Um, but so the trick to get them to breed, and they're really cool when they breed because these cribs, these pelvic acromis uh, tenatius or tenatus, um, I don't know, people say it different ways, but they eat um, everything that you can throw at them in theory, so they're omnivores. And then they live in streams in uh, in Nigeria, Cameroon, um, Burundi, uh, Sierra Leone, Cote d'Ivoire. Um, they live all in that western central Africa area. So they live in the rainforest and in like jungled areas. And once they match up, they start doing these dances and stuff. But the way I got them to match up so well... Uh, a lot of times they'll fight and they'll like rip each other apart. Apparently, especially this subspecies or this 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 coloration variant. Uh, I also probably need to take a couple guppies out because they get a little bit overwhelmed, and they don't like the snails on anywhere where they're potentially going to lay eggs. They don't mind the Malaysian ones, but the ram's horn and the pond snails, they do not like on there. They try to pull them off, and they're not strong enough sometimes. Also, the same problem is they're diggers, and they've dug through the substrate here, which was a pile of sand, but they've mixed it up so much you can see the layers of different sand I've tried for them, and it's just they keep getting to the rocks that they can't lift, and I don't know what to do about it. Um, don't killifish eat the fry from the guppies that you're trying to breed? No, the killifish, look how teeny they are. These are one of the smaller killifish. They're like... Not even an inch with that little rocket tail of theirs. Um, the fry, let me try to find, and that's the biggest killifish. Like, see this other one? He's like not much bigger than the fry. I was worried that the pelvic acromis would eat them, but so far it's been okay. The pelvic acromis have eaten, they did eat one of the rocket fish, um, but immediately spit it out. I happened to be watching and they just were like trying to figure out what it was like instinctually. Um, but yeah, the cool part about these fish too is they match up. So her belly's purple. Uh, it can be red, purple, or blue, um, or pink. And once they start like hooking up to mate, that leopard spotting on their tails and on their and the color on their belly sinks up so he's got like an orange and a slight pink to the top of his tail and so does she i did a really in-depth video on what makes these so special how she has a metallic gold sheen and that's because they actually like ocean fish they reflect uv light in a spectrum that makes them invisible to predatory fish that see the uv spectrum somewhat and so instead of seeing a fish that's bright and shiny when she's at her most colorful mating, doing her little shimmy shake dances, um, they see basically reflections of light and the play of water and light all over the place and it confuses them and she can get away. But that's because she's got this color thing where it looks purple here and if she turns or if I get the light right, see how it turns gold up top? Um, but from above, it looks purple. So it's purple down to uh, at, at the top of her back. And what they're doing right now is they're eating the roots of those crypts that I was just telling you were doing so well. Thanks, guys. Um, but to get these two to pair off, later, Yorkie T, thank you so much for joining. Um, 
I hope to see you next time. Uh, we'll try to get a consistent live stream schedule and uh, the other videos. I think I'm going to keep doing in-depth videos, but I'm going to be doing some shorter ones too, just for the people who want like quick tips and stuff. I'm just bad at keeping it short because I'm so many things to talk about. Like this lady, so they're back doing their dance. They stopped for a while, but when I put them together at first, they chased one another and they didn't get along super well. But bedtime for you in the UK. Well, thanks for joining in. Um, uh, thanks for joining in from the UK, mate. Cheers. Uh, I just got back an ancestry test and it turns out, well, I kind of knew it, but I've got... Uh, like over 50% of me is Scottish slash English, but Scottish happens to be what my grandfather and grandmother were. So hello to the UK. Um, but this light to show you, cause I keep not getting around to it. You can do moonlight. You can do partially moon. You can do uh, a full moon. You can do uh, sunset sunrise gradually. You can do cloud moving across the sky so if you look at the light here it's going to go from blue and now well maybe you can't see it but now it's going to red and so that simulates the red light that gets like blue light gets filtered out through the clouds and red light travels the most so you can do that you can set it to any random color you want also and then turn down the um this isn't helpful for anything really <laughs> <laughs> but you can do that. You can select a color and then turn down the white and play with the RGB at the same time. You can also hook it up to your phone. Um, yet again, I don't think it's that helpful. But the other thing you can do, and this was helpful. I thought it was gimmicky, but it was helpful with some of these, um, these cichlid species. Is So in... Where they're from, they get a wet season and a dry season, and there's a lot of lightning all year, but their wet season is follow, so it's the end of the dry season, water is shallow, the TDS is high, um, the hardness is high, and then the, uh, the water flow is really low because they're getting stuck in puddles and shallow streams and things, and then all of a sudden, crash giant rainstorms for like a month straight and so what i did was i the tank was already in a hard water state for the guppies but then i did a little bit of this and it lets you decide the speed but it it mimics lightning and you'd think that makes fish go insane but it actually as silly as it is they've used it at certain like universities and stuff and that combined with like a 50 or 60% water change um, that's warm water as it's like hitting the ground and the earth, um, that actually does a really good job of, it's what sparked them to uh, pair off and, and uh, get together. So yeah, this tank is super planted. Um, I don't like this rock. My wife picked it out and I think it's a cool rock, but it just doesn't like, it's not quite the texture of the other ones. So I might move this one around or flatten it and then build from it. The coconut's pretty front and center and I don't know if that's a bad thing. I might hide it more in the corner for them. Um, but my idea was that that way they could look out only this way and there aren't many fish that come that way. Um, so then I'm going to end this cast soon. I just don't want to make you guys dizzy. But yeah, so we've got this tank going on with some fry boxes of some special uh, females in here that just have beautiful tails and uh, Dumbo ears right here. Um, and then we've got, it almost looks like a weird mottled growth, but it's just uh, it's just like a tail thing that they have a uh, high tail hey aqua cop um and so yeah this tank it's doing its thing it had ick for a while there's the bloody gudgeon so this is the peacock gudgeon that's ruining my life so once i put them in this tank the story wasn't over they jumped up here and they ate all the baby fries except for three out of there um that was frustrating 
<laughs> amongst other frustrating things. They don't use their hut. They spawn in here. In Africa, people, the people simulate pounding rain and thunder by playing drums, termites to launch flight. It's not impossible. Yeah, I mean, people, yeah, they've definitely, in other cultures, they've learned how to simulate the, the seasons and the rain and things like that. So now the question I have for you guys is, what do I do here fish-wise? I've got some room for fish. And I like to keep my tanks heavy on fish just because um, uh, just be sorry I'm reading comments uh, just because I think when they're heavy on fish it um, helps the plants and then I got lots of fish uh, I have to stay on top of water changes like there's no tomorrow um, but yeah, so I've got that going on. I'm going to get some more shrimp. I think I'm going to get... Um, this is the first uh, Calico Pleco that I've owned. I've had a few other kinds. But this one is going to blend right in with these rocks. But it's got blonde tips on its tail. And its eyes have a bunch of personality. And it doesn't have the barbels that... Um, White clouds would look awesome. Yeah, you're totally right. Our, our red meteor minnows, those would look really cool in here. Um, what, uh, what are these water parameters? So in here right now, I've got it at 78 degrees. Uh, it is The pH is about 7.5. And the hardness, uh, there's half a bag of coral in here with substrate that was already used and then it's capped with sand and there's root tabs and some um, non-reactive, like non-brand name uh, substrate under there for, for the plants. But it, and then up here, obviously we've got lots of water plants that will be helping filter. Um, it's probably, I haven't tested since I just added the sand. It's a silica-based sand, which can have fine particles. And I think I would guess that like the KH is probably like six ish, maybe seven. And the GH is probably like five or to eight, somewhere in there. And then the TDS is still fairly low, which surprised me. The TDS was like, um, what was it? It was 120. So that surprised me with the, the crushed coral that it was still so low. But out of the tap, our TDS is uh, freaking 28 is what I get at my house. Um, and higher if it's in the spring when it snows melting. But I was just showing people earlier, I can keep Caradina shrimp without doing anything to my water. Um, just the calcium from some crushed coral and the food that has supplemental minerals uh, for the neos uh, does fine. So that's kind of nice that I can keep them uh, in there. And I'm going to try out doing a colony of both types of shrimp in the future. But I really want to get my hands on some ninja shrimp. Um, also, this scape, what you're missing is there's a rock that goes here. I'm trying to decide if I want this ledge to actually become buried and only be showing partially and give some perspective and plant some more grass up into there. I just planted all this hair grass um, recently, today. And then um, I've got the golden, the, the blood red bodied. So they used to be albino, but now they've been crossed back. And so they're just a blood red body with uh, gold or opalescent uh, shells. And so, yeah, and I'm trying to show like the cracks and crevices of these towers these occur naturally in eastern washington where um where i you know drive through once in a while eastern washington is a hardcore desert even though western washington is a mud puddle and rain fest um but yeah so i'm gonna be putting as i showed people don't want you guys dizzy gonna be gluing these the this moss like so onto here so that it'll float outward and then you'll see the um the nice fronds of it 
and then I'll have to trim that, which is going to be a pain in the butt, but, you know, such is life. So, um, I don't think I'm going to do too much more in this cast. I've showed you guys all the main tanks. I'm trying to debate which tank to do the CO2 on. It very well may be this tank here. I'm trying to build back up my blue shrimp, blue dream, uh, maybe blue topaz. I don't know. I like the electric blue shrimp rather than the dark blue shrimp that everybody seems to strive for. I like the ones that are like super bright, and that's why I chose a lighter color sand substrate. I'm also going to top off this sand substrate later. Um, I want to have this main column sitting farther back also. Um, so that's another thing that I'm going to... Have you thought... So hold on one sec. Thanks for always streaming. You're always on point. Have a great night. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Have you thought about doing a Pistagram? Yeah, I've had Rams. Um, I like Rams, but I'm just kind of over Rams. Like, no offense to them. Um, but a Pistos, yeah, like some of the fire red and double fires and like the sunburst ones are really cool. I would think of that. But I actually, I'm, I'm in love with my Pelvica Chromis Tenadius um, uh cribs i think they're awesome i i would do like maybe a pelvicromis pelvicacromis pulcher which means beautiful um i'm gonna scoot some things out of the way let's see if we can move this rock back farther oh no get off of there dude um of course my my pleco is gonna be on there this is a precarious balance but okay let's see here that's probably too high let's let me get you guys zoom back out i've got a tripod but i can't get used to using it when i keep trying to change what i'm showing you um that's probably too high huh guys um so i don't know crusting the water is kind of cool i just don't want to waste the space in the tank essentially that's my main concern um, maybe I'll set it in here like such and just twist there we go that's what I wanted that's better don't fall over so I'm always paranoid that I'm gonna bust the glass on these things but and maybe I will someday but originally I had had these uh, this aquascape in a complete uh triangular or v shape so like it it came towards you a little bit and uh so it was like this and then farthest point was there and then these rocks came out here so i've got more rocks that i'm going to glue that moss to that'll go in there but um We'll see what happens. I don't know. But thanks for watching, you guys. Thanks for hitting like and for subscribing. Um, feel free to hit me up with any questions, any cool ideas. I'm using all the Patreon funds to, like, like I got a tripod. Uh, I'm going to get a better camera. Uh, I want to get a couple new things like the Ninja Shrimp that change colors and see how that goes and see if anybody making it to Brack. Yeah, I would consider... Uh, doing a brackish tank totally um, sorry Brian um, you can re-watch the live stream but if you have a question real quick or anything about something I, I'll answer it or if you have a question after you re-watch the live stream I'll try to answer all of those I'm trying to do blue shrimp in here though like that's as dark as I want them I want like electric blue shrimp in this tank and um I'm hoping that the lighter scape will really encourage that. Um, I'm going to have to reshuffle the scape. So uh, it's all good, Cecilia. Thanks. And uh, I like your page too. So um, keep it up, all your hobbies. <laughs> so um, yeah, guys, I think I'm going to get out of here unless you have a question. I'm, I'm happy to answer a question, but... I'm so uh, picky about how I want things done that this scape is driving me nuts. I need to readjust. I need to eh, twist that, eh, scoot that, and and then I'll return my sanity. Uh, so, all right, guys. Well, take it easy. Thank you so much for watching. As always, these are kind of ramblings and um, kind of uh, touching on what I spoke about in the week. So, 
uh, check out the other videos that I've done and stuff like that talking about them. So uh, the one on smuggling, and then there's a pretty decent one history-wise and detail-wise on um, atypo, uh, atiopis, atiopsis shrimp, which is bamboo shrimp, mini bamboo shrimp, and uh, uh, green lace shrimp. So yeah, you guys all have a great night. Um, as well thank you for watching i really appreciate it. it helps the channel keeps me going um and uh i'll uh i'll talk to you guys soon are you saying oh cool hang on or or what are you saying um you can message me later if that if 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 you have a question i'm available i'm single no actually i'm very married <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, take it easy. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your fish and keep on swimming. I'll talk to you next time.